For Krima Media's Quality, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is what 91 ANC candidate Nomonde Ndlovu to talk about the service delivery ahead of elections. So you're one of the youngest ward councillors in the ANC. You must have ideas on how to improve issues for service delivery, especially in your ward. Can you tell us about that? I think with service delivery, it needs um, prompt responses, that we shouldn't wait for something to decay before we react to it. For example, um, if you don't cut the grass on open fields, um, it will create legal dumping. As a result, the area starts to decay. So swift responses and dealing with issues as they come. If someone logs a query now, it should be dealt with now, not at a later stage or after two or three years. And what would you say now to those people out there uh, who are criticizing uh, the ANC, your party, for encouraging the youth to occupy such important positions? There's not much I could say. It's their view. However, as the ANC, they have realized that um, young people constitute of 60% of young voters. So for you to get them to the polls to exercise their right, you need to have someone they feel familiar with or someone that they can easily access to have access to. Also, with the new councillor candidate process of the ANC, you had to go to a community meeting. So we were not chosen by the ANC, but the community was also actively involved in selecting the preferred candidate. So it shows that elderly people, our 65-year-olds, have confidence in us young people because if you look in our region, which is Ikurulini, there's about 26 young people who are ward councillor candidates, and then you further see into the PR candidate list. There are some young people that are there, and that is all because of the new policy, the new way of doing things that community members must select who they basically fit to service them. By now, Monday, you've seen the immediate challenges that you will address in your ward should the ANC win. Immediate challenges are basically in my ward because it's a da led ward, which is what they perceive as a minority. Service delivery issues. We don't get services for what we pay for. We pay too much rates and taxes and then you'd find that refuse is not collected. We've got drugs and alcohol, which are social issues that need to be addressed, especially amongst young people. Unemployment being one of them, uh, where there's unemployment, you'll get a high crime rate because these people are scrambling to make a living. And due to COVID, it has exposed a lot of families or a lot of communities as to we can see that it may be that you live in a suburban ward, but now COVID has exposed that you are actually living below the breadline. And just our area is just decaying. Nothing is being done. I mean, it's a mess. It's a mess. So I'm first going to tackle drugs and alcohol, ensure that people get opportunities in terms of employment, schooling opportunities, and just give the community what they are paying for, which are basic service delivery. That's all they're asking for. And many white councillors, they've been criticized before for not being sympathetic to the issues that are addressed by the people on the ground. Do you have a solid plan on how you will always be accessible to your community? There's a plan in place. In fact, in terms of what a ward councillor should do is that you must be seen on the ground all the time. Um, It cannot be that you sit in your office and expect people to come to you. Remember, you are servicing other areas that are can't afford to go to your office and things like that. So we should have monthly meetings with different voting districts within, within our ward, which is Ward 91. And then it goes back to ward committees. When you elect ward committee members, they should be very active and people that want to implement things. You can't just be a ward committee and just sit at home and not assist the councillor because that's what they are there for, to assist you in the event that you're not there. So monthly community meetings, uh, ward committees that are functional and that are able to make a difference in the absence of the councillor and working hand in hand with the community, small business people, and just all stakeholders generally. Dwelling on the issue of drugs and alcohol, as you you have just addressed, what do you think should be done to to help the youth, especially that is dealing with these issues in your ward? What needs to be done? If you look at the drug issue, it's mainly because young people are frustrated. You have very learned young people 
who are sitting at home with degrees, diplomas. So what we can do not to just to combat it because we can't finish it, the unemployed should get job opportunities, no matter how small the job, just get them occupied. We've got skill centers in um, Kempton Park, which is an artisan center, where we can take them there so they can develop a skill. There are those that don't want to work nine to five. We assist them to start up their businesses and also assist them to tap in the municipality grant aid because it's there for them, for their startup, for their businesses. And also with this bursary program that the Ikurulen is running, from 10 million, I think, five years ago to 100 million, um, it's there. We just need to educate people more so that they can access those grant aids, that bursary for school, and just be there for them and keep them occupied. Uh, I think that that could help, you know, reduce the amount of drug and alcohol abuse in the area. And lastly, what do you say now to those who are no longer interested in politics? Because we know out there, there are people who are just saying uh, on November 1, we are not voting. We are frustrated. Nothing is done uh, after so many years. First and foremost, you need to remind people about their basic rights, uh, which is in our Constitution of South Africa, which is section 19 point number one about their basic right to vote. You remind them why is it important to, to, to be a voter. And remember, your vote is your voice. So you cannot complain and point fingers that this is not done but we, as you haven't exercised your vote or, or your voice in making sure there is a change. Because you'd find in communities, a lot of people complain about service delivery, drug abuse, crime, this, that. But come voting day, they're not seen at the polls. So how do you make a change if you are not part of the change? So it's just just to remind them a bit as to this is your basic right. You need to utilize it if you want to see change. There was what 91 Kantela in Eguruleni no Mondendovu unpacking the issues of service delivery ahead of elections.